You know the WWE product is in a bad state of affairs when even the content on the WWE Network starts to go down. And here's what I mean. We go from podcasts being hosted by Stone Cold Steve Austin and then Chris Jericho and was there maybe a Foley in there or something like that, whatever the case might be, to now, what is it, Peter Rosenberg or whatever the fuck Rosenberg's first name is. Think about that. Stone Cold, Chris Jericho, Rosenberg. That's who you're building this new Bring It to the Table series around, is this Rosenberg dude. Now, I understand that he has radio and podcast and stuff, and he has a sizable audience, but again, we go from Stone Cold to Jericho to Rosenberg. At least if you were going to bring a fan in to do this type of thing, maybe you should have brought in somebody like Dave Meltzer. I'm just saying. If you're going to go down that route, then you're best to go with the biggest mark of all in Meltzer, who also happens to be one of the greatest workers in the history of the professional wrestling business, because he created a star rating system when he was never a wrestler, and people swear by it. Just saying. But I look at this whole concept of bring it to the table, and the way this particular premiere episode was structured with JBL and Paul Heyman, to me, clearly was a work. Like, first of all, why the hell did you need to have two people on this debut that don't really have a whole heck of a lot to do with each other directly? Um, it's like they were afraid the fan was going to get the best of one of them, so they had to create a situation where the advantage was there for the WWE people by getting two of them together uh, and they could just basically bully somebody into submission, which is kind of what happened. You, you have this show, especially this particular episode, it's, it's yet another way the WWE is trying to appeal to the hardcore fans as they drive away casual mainstream fans. And they've got to try to appeal to the hardcores as much as possible because that's all they've got. More and more every day, that's all they've got. And, you know, the primary talking point to come out of this debut edition of Bring It to the Table was the discussion that centered around Raw being three hours and why it's three hours and whether or not it should be three hours. And kind of the argument that was floated out there by JBL and Heyman was that three-hour Raws are part of the television contract terms, which is true. Um, that TV contracts are still the number one guaranteed revenue source and stream for the WWE. So if that's part of the TV contract, you don't want to sit there and mess around with the TV contract because you could potentially be um, costing your company significant amounts of revenue in the millions of dollars that, in theory, allow you to do other things. gives you more uh, funding security and certainty, if you will. Uh, also, that third hour of Raw is something that gets filled by stuff like the cruiserweights because you have like four segments with the cruiserweights and that takes up almost that third hour in and of itself. And as I'm sitting there and listening to this from JBL and Paul Heyman and the arguments that they made, and at one point in time Heyman talking about Rosenberg being entitled to his stupid opinion. Now, of course, Rosenberg, not being a quality journalist, failing to ask tough follow-up questions and appropriate follow-up questions and coming across like he actually bothered to research the topic when he knew he was going there, allowed himself basically to get bullied by JBL and Heyman. And, you know, it's either a work from the standpoint of Rosenberg wasn't in on it, or this is one of these things where he set himself up as kind of a patsy, and that was the plan all along, to try and diffuse this whole talk about Raw needs to stop being three hours. And to me, this is just another example of what I'm trying to combat. I'm trying to wrestle with stupidity and wrestle against the stupidity surrounding the professional wrestling business in 2017. Because what JBL and Heyman were talking about, you know, Heyman talking about you're entitled to your stupid opinion. JBL trying to bring up facts and figures because he's the business guy. He's the stock market guy. So he's automatically got great credibility here and he automatically knows and is not to be challenged. It's just a bunch of bullshit. Because so much of what they talked about and so much of what they discussed, you could just poke all types of holes in it like a Swiss cheese. Like first and foremost, JBL citing the fact that the WWE's television deals are all locked in in the major areas, U.S., uh, U.K., India, and I think you mentioned one or two other places, through 2019. And that's the number one revenue stream for the WWE to the tune of about $170 million a year. Now, the first problem I have with this 
is that he's taking all of the television deals and combining them under one umbrella, which from a revenue standpoint does make sense. But in terms of breaking down individual television contracts does not. What was worked out with NBC Universal USA Network is entirely different than what was worked out in the UK, what was worked out in India, what have you. Second, when we talk about the third hour Raw, that was something done under the terms of the last television contract that the WWE had with NBC Universal the USA Network. USA Network wanted WWE to add that third hour of Raw, and I think at the time they floated them like another 10 or 15 million dollars a year in order to add that third hour. So it got added during the last television contract. This has been around for several years now. On top of that, when we talk about you can't really go and change the terms of television contracts as you go along, well, clearly you can because, A, not only was the third hour of Raw added during the last television contract, we've seen SmackDown change dates and time slots multiple times during television deals to the point now where it airs live Tuesday night, where it used to be taped. So clearly, if you present the case properly, shit can be changed during the contract. I mean, to sit there and say it isn't, that you're not able to, is ridiculous. Saying the cruiserweights basically take up the whole hour is just dumb mark bullshit said by JBL, and it shouldn't surprise me. The cruiserweights at best get two crappy matches a week, maybe one backstage segment, and that is it. That is barely filling 20 to 30 minutes of content, let alone 60 minutes of content, even if you add in commercials for that hour of block of time. And then to sit there and make this argument that television is the number one revenue stream for the WWE, while that's technically true, that's not the way it's designed to be. If the WWE Network was performing at a level that was originally planned, somewhere between two to two and a half million subscribers, if you remember, to really truly break even uh, compared to the old pay-per-view business model of the WWE, if you had that many subscribers to the network, now especially since you've expanded the network pretty much internationally, your network is significantly underperforming to expectations. If it performed somewhat close to expectations, television revenue would not be the number one revenue stream of the WWE. It would be the WWE network. Just think about it. If you're talking about 170 million a year for all the television contracts, maybe 140 to 150 million a year in terms of the WWE network, that's 20 million. If you added 300, 400, 500,000 subscribers to the network, like you should have already been able to do, guess what? That makes up the difference, and now the network is the number one revenue stream, which again is the way it was designed to be, because the WWE has more control over that than they do the television revenue. And, and I think when we sit there and talk about it, obviously JBL and Heyman are being company guys, and they're out there to do the company guy thing. And it's just this delusion of the WWE bubble that there's nothing wrong with Raw being three hours. And even though a lot of the people in the company know it, and they know this is a problem, but they always fight against it. And I don't know why. Because you've got to look at the big picture damage that has been caused since Raw went to three hours. Now, surely in and of itself, Raw being three hours as opposed to two is not the only problem with the WWE's current product. Same thing as the PG rating is not the only thing wrong with the WWE today. It is one part of the picture, one piece of the puzzle. But in the case of the three-hour Raw, it creates so many of the other problems in terms of oversaturization, in terms of overextending yourselves, in terms of not having enough ideas to fill that time and you water down your product. It is a big significant factor. And since you've went to Raw going from two hours to three hours, there has to be some type of direct correlation here with the amount of viewers that have been lost throughout the past two to three years. I mean, we're talking about a million and a half or so viewers. A million and a half or so viewers over the past three to four years have been lost. That has to tie in strongly to the damage that is caused by the third hour of Raw. It has to be. It has to tie directly into that and the other things that result as a consequence. So just think of it this way. If Raw was back to being two hours, 
you know, granted at this point in time, you wouldn't have those, all those million and a half viewers back, but let's say you never did the three hours and you stayed at two hours and you were able to hold your audience there, but maybe instead of getting four and a half million viewers a week, you're battling around four, or even if you had only three and a half million viewers, and let's say you got rid of the third hour of Raw and you went to two hours and your viewership went from being happy to get three million viewers now to three and a half million viewers. That's an extra 500,000 viewers that could potentially subscribe to the network at $10 a month. That's $5 million a month. Over the course of a year, that's $60 million. Bam, boom, what do you know? The network is now performing closer to its original expectations, and the network is now the number one revenue stream of the company. If you got rid of that third hour of Raw, how much are you really losing in terms of the overall value of the contract? And then, you know, breaking it down how it actually is supposed to be, which is the U.S. deal is the U.S. deal, and these other deals are different deals, and those different deals weren't based off of Raw being three hours. They really weren't. They're based off of WWE and the type of viewership they're going to get, what have you. And you look at the big picture, and the loss of viewers means fewer p potential network subscribers. It means lower figures in terms of your live attendance, which can also lead to a decreased amount of merchandise sales, which is another big revenue stream for the WWE, which can also lead to a decreased digital footprint. You've even seen this over the past year or two, where Raw, every week they're talking about the number one trend, where the number one trend, this is trending on social media, that's trending on social media. Now they just pretty much splash the hashtag up there, and they don't even mention it because most of the time the shit from Raw isn't trending. It's all that free publicity you get out there that you're not getting now in part because the third hour of Raw has driven away a significant portion of your fan base. In part because the product got so goddamn boring because there's just too much of it to keep up with. You didn't have enough ideas to fill that much television time. And it's just unreasonable to expect people to watch a three hour show every single week, then follow that up. Not like you would with football or this or that. You're expecting them to also then watch two hours of SmackDown, probably an hour of NXT, once or twice a month, a three to four hour special event pay-per-view. You start to run into the issue similar to the NFL, where they have all of these games to the point where there's a game on Thursday night, there's three games on Sunday, there's a game on Monday. That's 15 hours worth of football or a few days span. Is in, it sounds great in theory, but if the product isn't good, eventually people are going to get burnt out from it and they're really going to start tuning it out. And that's why the NFL you know, suffered a big ratings problem here in 2016. That's what happened. The product was crappy, and there's just too much of it. and just drives people away. And you got to look at this, too. How much longer are you going to stubbornly dig in and say, this third hour of Raw, this third hour of Raw is not the problem, when there's so much empirical evidence that clearly points to a major problem that you have with Raw, is the fact that it's three hours is just too much damn show to fill, too much content to provide, and asking too much of the fans to watch each and every single week. And then when we look at a big picture in terms of the television contract, and this is where JBL's argument in particular is completely and totally ridiculous, not only if you cut that third hour of Raw and got back to the two-hour Raw, could you compensate for the loss or change in terms of the television contract by an increase in things such as more network subscribers, higher live event attendance, higher merch sales, and increased digital footprint trending again on social media. You also got to look at it this way too. Advertisers are going to start getting pissed about the fact that they're not getting the bang for the buck that they're being promised by the WWE and the USA Network. On top of that, that means that USA is going to start getting pissed because they're going to sit there and say, hey, we paid this much per year for the rights to show your shows, expecting it to deliver this rating in these demographics, and the WWE is significantly underperforming. And we have gotten to the point now where Fox News is doing WWE better than WWE, and what I mean by that is Fox News is destroying Raw in the ratings every single week. Like, they've appealed to their hardcore audience and fan base better than WWE has. Think about that. Raw used to be number one all the time, unless it was like Monday Night Football. And now they're getting their asses kicked by Tucker Carlson and Bill O'Reilly and Sean Hannity, and it's just, oh my fucking God, what has happened here? It can't be good in a, in a company like NBC Universal, USA Network. They're not going to like that either, because they're paying a price expecting this rating or this level of viewership, 
and this performance and this demographic or these demographics, and they're not getting them. And this continues to trend in that way or only gets worse. You're going to have the network breathing down your neck. And when you get the network breathing down your neck, that's not a place you want to be. And you also got to think about long term. We talk about JBL 2019. You have those deals locked in. Okay, 2019 is a little over two years away. We're not trending in a good direction. In two plus years, how many more viewers are you going to lose? Because in part, you stubbornly cling on to this three-hour raw ridiculousness. Furthermore, how much is it going to impact your leverage that you already really didn't have the last time you negotiated the television deal and you therefore as a result got a very disappointing increase in television revenue that if you remember at the time sent the stock down significantly. Because you thought people were going to be competing for you and it just didn't happen. Because there just aren't that many networks that really want to get involved with professional wrestling, especially to the price that would be required to get involved with WWE. You keep driving away more viewers. Imagine how much you're going to hurt your leverage when it comes time to renegotiate again with the USA Network. You'll be lucky to get anything more than a cost of living increase from USA when it comes to your television deal. So where other sports organizations like the NBA and NFL and Major League Baseball, when they renegotiate television contracts, they get big, huge, sweeping increases in terms of the television revenue pie. The WWE is just sitting there chucking, 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 chucking. And who's to say that USA is going to want to continue to do business with you because they're going to sit there and say, why would I sink myself into another long-term deal if you've lost this percentage of your audience over the past three to four years of this contract? How much more are you going to lose over the next three to four years of your contract? And if you lose that much again in the next three to four years of your contract, we get into the middle portion of the 2020s decade, what the hell is this show going to look like? What the hell is the viewership going to look like, especially in key demographics? And what advertisers are going to want to pay the type of price that we're going to want to command for this prime time slot on Monday night? And, and I look at it this way. Is the little bit of extra money that you get from doing that third hour of Raw worth the potential huge losses, you know, up to somewhere between 70 to $100 million when you think about it? Decreased live event attendance, decreased merch sales because not as many people are watching. At some point in time, it's going to impact the amount of ad revenue you get because not as many people are going to want to buy in at the price that you were charging before. On top of that, you look at the potential future impact in terms of the television deal, the underperformance of the WWE Network in terms of total subscriber counts, and it's just no. And to sit there and act as if the third hour of Raw is not a problem is a stupid fucking opinion. When Paul Heyman wanted to quip to Rosenberg that he's entitled to his stupid opinion, the retort back should be, well, thinking the three hour of Raw is great and there's nothing wrong with it is a stupid fucking opinion because it clearly damn is. On top of that, knowing that this third hour of Raw has led to a significant decrease in terms of interest in the product and a decrease in the audience. How can you continue to justify what's going on and defend it when it smacks in the face of any and all logic that is clear for anybody to fucking see? It is. And then you've got a well-known wrestling fan here who is sitting there basically telling you that in part because it's three hours, he fast-forwards through the majority of the show. That, for a company that's keeping their eye on the ball, that, for a company that actually cares about pleasing their consumers, that, for a company that actually wants to improve and get better and make more money, would be a major warning, would be a major red flag. Because now an advertiser, the network's going to sit there and say, oh, they just fast forward through this shit. So why am I going to buy ad space on here when they're not watching it any fucking ways? He's telling you he's tuning out large portions of the product, and you're going to sit there and hammer this guy. No, you fucks JBL Heyman and the WWE. You're the ones with the stupid fucking opinions. You're the ones that need to be ha hammered. Period. This is the type of stupidity I'm trying to combat and wrestle against here in 2017. And, and, and the way they conducted and carried themselves, in particular, JBL and Heyman, and this arrogance... What do you have to fucking be arrogant about? You two fucks are part of the problem too.
Heyman's a one-trick pony, and that trick isn't nearly as entertaining and engaging as it was a couple of years ago. And JBL sucks as a fucking role as a commentator, period. And then to sit there and say, well, this is the way it is, and that's just too damn bad because it's not changing. That's not what successful companies do. It just isn't. Like I see every time, it seems like once or twice a year, I hear about Sears and Kmart closing stores. Part of the reason they got themselves into that situation is because they were poorly run companies that didn't change and adapt with the times. They didn't adjust to the Walmarts and the Targets taking an increased percentage of the overall market share in that aspect or in that segment of retail. They continued to want to do things their way without adapting to the modern times, the digital world. They didn't adjust, and now they're getting creamed, and they deserve to get fucking creamed. And unfortunately, a lot of people in those companies are going to get creamed when they continue to lose their damn jobs. Why anybody would want to work for that shitty company, I have no idea. But that's what happens when you don't listen, when you don't pay attention, when you assume that you know, and you think that you know, even though it smacks in the face of all logic being presented to you. And saying there's nothing wrong with the third hour of Raw, when you have a fan that is flat out telling you they would prefer it to be two hours because it's too much, and they just fast forward through a lot of the shit. Ding dong, dumb dicks, that's a fucking problem. That is a major significant problem because it would stand to reason, one would think, one would think that if this fan is fast forwarding through large portions of the show in part because three hours is just too goddamn much, how many people have completely tuned out the show because for professional wrestling a lot of times, while it's kind of a variety show in some ways, it's best if you're able to enjoy the entire experience of the show. Some fans don't want to sit there and pick and choose parts. Now, a lot have just to adjust because of, and adapt just based off of how bad it fucking is. But you really don't want to go into a wrestling show, whether well, it's WWE, TNA, ROH, New Japan, uh, Lucha Underground, whoever it may be. You don't want to sit there and say, I'm just going to watch this one segment on a consistent basis. You would like to be able to tune into the show and watch the entire show and let that entire show play out with the hope that it actually tells you some type of story and it engages you the entire time. What happens if it doesn't is instead of sitting there and just watching these certain segments and fast forwarding, eventually you get to the point where you say, why would I even fucking bother? Because now it all sucks and I'm just not going to watch any of it. And clearly based off of the past couple of years, that's what's happening. You even look since the first show of 2016 of Raw to the first show of 2017 of Raw, there's been a decrease of over 500,000 viewers in one year's time. You drove away a half a million plus viewers when you were all only at three and a half million viewers think about that for a second you drove away a seventh of your audience almost 15 percent of your audience in one year's time and that's not really a sustainable rate but except for WWE it has been for the past few years they're hemorrhaging about 500,000 viewers a year so think about when you get to the end of that television contract in 2019, another two years, you lose another million viewers, 500,000 a year, which is what you've been averaging. Now you're down to being happy and giggly tits and popping your nut for having two million viewers on Raw. And good luck trying to get the same amount of money, let alone more, on the USA Network television deal than what you're getting right now. If you go to them and say, hey, during the length of this television contract, we have lost over half of our fucking audience. JBL and Heyman, you stupid corporate sellout fucks. Stop towing the company line. For the people involved with WWE who know this is a major problem, nut up. Fix it before there's nothing to fix. And you can sit there and say, oh, stop it with the doom and gloom shit. Do you ever think we get to the point where people are popping because WWE happened to do th 3 million viewers for Raw? So imagine if I said that a couple of years ago. You'd have called me crazy. A lot of you did. But yeah, here we fucking are. How much more do we need to see the evidence smacking us in the face before we sit there and say, whoa, whoa, whoa. It is time to revisit everything. And if you say USA Network's not willing to do it, we'll make them willing to do it. It's called being business people.
stupid ass is fucking sitting there talking about, oh, the guaranteed revenue. Yeah, it's a little bit more up front, but it costs you so much more on the back end that it's an overall fucking loss, you idiots.